Good. Yes. Glad it's happening there and not happening here. Right. I mean, we are <laughs> far from that, Anthony. It's been so warm this fall so far. It has, it has. And uh, I'm just going to prepare you right now, Janice <laughs> and Ryan, that, okay. you know, it's just a matter of time before you're going to hear about, uh, you know, the old farmer's almanac or whatever it may be, that we're going to get clobbered with snow. We're going to get all this cold weather. You hear it every year. I've been here in West Michigan two winters thus far, and uh, we've had these just outrageous predictions on crazy snow. It hasn't happened, but I'll bet you it's coming again because uh, there is this idea that there could be a second year in a row of La Nina and typically climatology says that we get more snow than average in La Nina's. Maybe we will, but it hasn't worked out the last two years. So let's hope let's hope it does it again this year. I know there's some folks that like the snow. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Grand Rapids Tower Cam. We're damp outside. Uh, we've got temperatures in the lower 60s. Uh, southeast wind around eight miles per hour. So those numbers have come down with the showers and thunderstorms that did press on through rain cooled air air taking up residents around here and knocking those numbers down. Call it 62 at 7 a.m. Still some spotty sprinkles and showers around. So uh, you're probably going to need those windshield wipers out the door. It's going to be feeling a little bit cool there as we just slowly meander our way to 66 degrees. So not a real warm day and uh, perhaps no sunshine at all. But there may be a break or two for some very faint or brief sun in the afternoon. Overall, though, certainly it classified as mostly cloudy, if just not a downright overcast for Tuesday. Southwest winds will be breezy, making it feel even a little bit cool. Uh, those southwest winds at 15 to 20 late morning and early afternoon. That'll be the breeziest time of the day with some gusts, maybe as high as 30 miles per hour. As I mentioned on the first weather segment, it's almost as if a cold front has come through. You go from these yellow colors into the green colors, but it's more or less just outlining where the rain has been occurring as opposed to a cold front. For all intents and purposes, it may as well be a cold front because it has dropped off noticeably from earlier today. And look at the temperatures out west. We were just showing you some snowfall. Well, look at that. 33 in Casper, Wyoming, 34 Great Falls, Montana. That's a different type of a look than we have had recently across the lower 48. We're going to tap into a little bit of that, a little bit of it by this coming weekend. Out of the south and southeast are these winds at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Dew points now into the lower 60s, so the humidity has dropped off, and you won't feel nearly as much humidity tomorrow either. Just these scattered showers around the region, the thunderstorms of a more consequence that provided some wind gusts to 40 to 50, even 60 miles per hour. Power, power lines down, even some trees down in some localized areas with that first batch that came on through a while ago. Uh, those have cruised out of here, but there is still some moisture that's pinwheeling in from the south. Here's this area of low pressure, vigorous area of upper level low pressure. I was talking about that on the four, five, and six o'clock shows earlier. There is a new band of thunder storms that is creeping in from the south, and there is a severe thunderstorm warning there in northern Indiana. We'll see how that plays out as it comes north. Northward. Again, running into an air mass that's already been wrung out with a fair amount of rain locally. So probably going to be on a weakening trend, I would think. We're mainly just down to showers with some embedded thunder and lightning, perhaps some brief gusty winds with one of these cells, but that would be the exception and not the rule. We'll go to this RPM model, shows you the trajectory of the moisture from south to north, uh, a little bit of an easterly component, obviously, to the precipitation in the overnight period. Just these spotty showers, times where it'll dry out, times where it'll get wet again. You're stepping outside, going to work, six, seven, eight o'clock going to need those windshield wipers hit and miss patches of drizzle mist light showers that'll go into the early afternoon a tendency for it to wind down though in the afternoon or at least diminish even though the clouds will still be sticking around now we take a look at the european model carries that system from tonight out of here we get into drier conditions on wednesday this is the morning going out into the afternoon we'll have kind of a partly sunny sky i would think overall we'll get into the lower 70s winds out of the south so 72, not bad on Wednesday. Next system rides in with some minimal moisture, maybe a shower or two overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning. That's good timing, though, because when it comes through, you're sleeping. And then by Thursday afternoon, a bit of sunshine rolls into Friday. Not bad days there, Thursday and Friday. I think lower 70s on Thursday and upper 60s on Friday. Then the next system, this one's got to be watched because if it does take a far enough track off to the northwest, that could turn us quite wet overnight Friday into Saturday morning. Nonetheless, that gets out of here and behind it. I'm telling you, sun Monday, Monday, Tuesday next week. If you're looking out that far, it's a nice pattern. Janice and Ryan's sunshine will be out there. Temperature's a little cool, but uh, it's October. 60 and 65 there at the end of the seven day. We'll take it. All right, looks good. Thank you, Anthony. After fewer cases last